You turn biology cover both evolution and genetics. In this video, I'll focus just on genetics and try and cover the highlights at least of that unit and also how to use Punnett squares. So the first thing that we probably should talk about here is genes. There's lots of words that we need to learn and this is probably the first one. And genes are the traits that you inherit from both your biological mother and your biological father. So they cover obvious things like your hair colour and your eye colour, whether or not you can roll your tongue. But they also carry things like a predisposition to some um, diseases and illnesses, which is why when you go to the doctors, they ask if there's a family history of diabetes or of heart disease or something along those lines. So they're important things to have a look back through your, his your family history about to see if it's something that might affect you. It can affect some behavioural things, so maybe a predisposition towards addiction to alcohol and that sort of thing. But it can't really influence your behaviour. So if you're poorly behaved, you rob a bank, you drive a car too fast, that sort of thing. Those things are all environmental. They're not part of your gene makeup. The next important term to learn is chromosomes. Uh, they kind of look a little bit like that bad drawing that I've done there. We've got 23 pairs of chromosomes, which is important because different species have different numbers of pairs. And they sort of arrange our genes. So all of our genes are arranged, you know, along our chromosomes a bit like this. And that's all the info like we talked about for our eye colour, hair colour and all those other traits. Um, and these chromosomes form our DNA. So every time you create a new cell in your body, the DNA is replicated and all of this information is carried through every cell in your body. And your DNA is an important thing to think about as well. Your DNA is unique to you and no one else. So sometimes we talk about it being a blueprint. So it describes everything about you and everything about your body. But also, it's also a fingerprint. So it's unique to you. No one else has the same DNA as you, which is why at crime scenes they always collect DNA because they can identify exactly who was present at the scene. Next, we should talk about alleles. These are different versions of the same gene. So if we're talking about hair colour here, for example, you might have genes for brown hair only, or for blonde hair, or you might be carrying genes for blonde and brown hair. So they form genotypes, which we'll talk about in a minute, and they can be dominant or recessive. So the hair colour example that I've just said, brown hair is a dominant gene, but I must be carrying a blonde hair gene because my son has blonde hair. So if I was only carrying genes for brown hair, then he would have brown hair. And we'll have a look at that in a bit more detail when we get to the Punnett squares. The next important thing is genotypes. And these are the combinations of alleles that we carry. Remember that we're carrying them in pairs and they're different versions of the same gene. And so we write these as letters and they can either be a dominant or a recessive trait. And what we do is we give each of those genes a particular letter. It doesn't really matter what letter it is. I could have chosen hair for hair colour or I've just chosen B for brown. But in this case, brown hair is a dominant gene and that tends to be the case. And blonde hair tends to be a recessive gene. It doesn't mean that brown hair is better than blonde hair. It means that um, if you've got genes for brown hair, they're the ones that are going to express themselves. So that'll be your phenotype, but we'll get to that in a minute. So if you've got um, a combination of uh, alleles or your, your genotypes here, could be for capital B, capital B, capital B, little b, or little b, little b. Now, if we have a look at these one by one, this genotype here is for um, brown hair. It only has brown hair genes. This has a brown and a blonde gene, but it will be brown because it's got a dominant brown gene. And the final one here, you're looking at blonde hair because the, this person only has genes for blonde hair. But we also have to talk about these genotypes as being either homozygous or heterozygous. So if we have a look at these two here, okay, 
these two are homozygous. So homozygous genotypes occur when you've got the same letter. Okay, so two capital Bs or two blonde, uh, two small Bs. But if you get one of each, you've got a heterozygous genotype. So in other words, you've got one of each. And the last part of this puzzle is the word phenotypes. And these describe what you see, or in other words, which gene is expressed. So a good example, you know, if we're having a look um, back here at this example, if you're seeing a genotype for little b, little b, that's going to be blonde hair, the phenotype is for blonde hair. Right, now that we've covered all that terminology, maybe just pause me for a minute and get all of this down, because you'll need to remember what each of these words mean, and we'll move into some examples. This is a picture of my family, so this is me with my wife and son. And if you have a bit of a close look at our hair colour, my wife's hair is blonde, and my son's hair is blonde, a bit hard to see with a hat, and my hair's dark coloured spring. The next thing we've got to do is have a look at something called Punnett squares, and they look like this. So what we're going to have a look at here is, you know, why Ruben has got blonde hair, and if that was, you know, the only outcome that he could have had, or if there could have been possible, uh, multiple possible outcomes for him. So first thing that we're going to pick is we're going to pick a trait. So the gene that we're focusing on here is hair colour, and we know that um, the hair color, the dominant hair color is is brown. Okay, so we'll give that a capital B for brown, and that the recessive gene for hair is blonde. So it gets the little B. And the question will usually be, whoops, question will usually be posed for you. They'll they'll tell you that brown hair is dominant. You don't need to know that. Um, and in this case, what we do is we match up Bridget against me in the, the Punnett square to see what the possible outcomes for our child's hair colour to be. Now, if we put my wife at the top, Bridget, her hair colour is blonde. And if that is a recessive gene, which we can see over on the right there, that means that she is only carrying genes for blonde hair. Because if she was carrying a dominant brown hair gene, it would be expressed as her phenotype and she would have brown hair. I, on the other hand, have brown hair. So I'm either going to be carrying genes that are capital B, capital B, so just brown hair, or, and in my case, definitely, I'm carrying a heterozygous genotype, but I am showing a phenotype of brown hair. Okay. And I'll show you why in a second, because what we do now is we basically just cross this with this to give us an outcome, and we keep going through the square. So, capital B meets little b, and what we end up with is a genotype BB, then capital B meets little b, and I get capital B, little b, little b meets little b, and little b meets little b. Now, Reuben, my son, won't get all four combos, okay? He'll only get one of those. So he's got a 25% chance at getting each of those. Nice, easy maths on this. But have a look at it. We've got this one here and this one here. They have got heterozygous genotypes. So they've got capital B, little b. That means that he has got a 50% chance of ending up with a genotype that's heterozygous, or he has a 50% chance of ending up with a homozygous um, genotype for blonde hair. And that's why I know I must be carrying that little b. I'll show you what would happen if I was only carrying a homozygous um, genotype for brown hair in a second. So his, this is the important bit for our language, right? His genotypes are these two possible outcomes. The phenotypes are brown hair, 
and that's 50%. Okay, so that one matches up with this one here. And the other possible one is blonde hair. Oops, it can have a capital. Blonde hair. And that matches up with that little b, little b. Okay, so the question will often ask you what are the genotypes and the percentage outcomes of that, so that's percentage likelihood. What are the phenotypes and percentage likelihoods? And so that's how you'd answer that question. Now, getting back to what would happen if um, I wasn't carrying a blonde gene. So let's just say, for example, that I was carrying a second capital B here. If you have a look, this changes the maths entirely. Suddenly, it's a 100% chance of brown hair and a 0% chance of blonde. So I must be carrying that little um, blonde gene, otherwise Reuben wouldn't be blonde. Now, just bear this in mind, this is theoretical. This is a very simplified version of how genetics works. Remember, we're in year 10. Um, and also, we have to allow for genetic mutation, which we've also talked about in evolution prior to this. So these are not guaranteed outcomes, but this is a really nice and neat example for that. When you go to answer these questions in the test, you're going to be looking for the words dominant and recessive. Okay, You're going to be allocating them letters like we have done here, and then you'll be solving them. Let's do one more, and let's stay with um, my family as an example. So I'll just fix that first one up. This time we'll have a look at eye colour, and unfortunately our family is very um, non-interesting when it comes to that. So um, what we'll do is we've got blue eyes, I've got blue eyes, Bridget's got blue eyes. We'll put Bridget back at the top again. There's no reason. Bridge can go either way, so can I. So we're just crossing them over. We'll get the same result. But if Bridge has got blue eyes, that means that you know if we've got allocated capital E for brown eyes, the dominant gene, and a recessive blue eye gene showing up in our genotype as a little e, then Bridge only has little e's. And similarly, if I've got blue eyes, I haven't got any brown eye genes either. Otherwise, my phenotype or what I'd show would be brown eyes. So when we cross these over, It's not very interesting. We have a 100% chance of a genotype that is little e, little e, and 0% chance of it being capital E's or a, a heterozygous capital E, little e. So we are homozygous recessive for blue eye colour, and our phenotype is going to be blue eyes. In other words, what we show is our phenotype and the combo of letters is our genotype. hope that makes it all nice and clear. Um, let me know if you need some help with any of the others.